Hello everyone, this is Dr. Calkins. Today we're going to cover experiment 13, it's on page 85. This one covers intermolecular forces, which is a topic for uh, week nine material for us. Um, one of the strongest intermolecular forces is hydrogen bonding. In order to have hydrogen bonding, you have to have one of the three most electronegative atoms, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, three most electronegative nonmetals, and three most electronegative atoms, period. Attached to hydrogen, 2.1 electronegativity is going to give us our most polar of bonds. So if we're going to be superpolar, this is basically our superglue. And superglue is what holds things like water together. So if you look at the bottom of our page, uh, notice water has very electronegative oxygens. They feel negative. They attract electropositive hydrogens from other molecules. That attraction is called hydrogen bonding. Even though it's called hydrogen bonding, it's not a real bond. It's a real attraction. Intermolecular forces are a lot like interstates. They go uh, molecule to molecule, just like an interstate would go from state to state. So let's practice a little bit before we get into the uh, lab itself. So one of the first things we're going to do is try hydrogen fluoride. What's important about hydrogen fluoride is to realize it's not that useful for us. It's not oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen for some of those groups that we covered in our previous chapters. But it is going to have a very polar bond, and we see that first by recognizing its electronegativity. So fluorine at a 4.0, fluorine at a 4.0, most electronegative on the table, hydrogen at a 2.1, hydrogen at a 2.1. If that is 0.5 or larger, we would say polar on just about every exam of our semester, and this is significantly polar towards fluorine. Fluorine is one of our biggest bullies, and we see it bullying here at 1.9. That's about as big as you can get before you become completely ionic. And that's what we would have done on exam two kind of material. As we go closer to exam three, we need to realize that molecules can talk to each other through charges, or at least partial charges, and here fluorine being electronegative feels partially negative. Feels partially negative. Hydrogen being bullied, it's only electron being nearly ripped away, is going to feel partially positive. And just like magnets on a refrigerator, positive and negative will attract molecule to molecule through an intermolecular force called hydrogen bonding. So much so that these molecules can stick together um, to 19.5 degrees before breaking apart. Let's try another example. Let's move over to water. We saw the answer on the previous page. We just need to think about it together, a little bit slower. So look at electronegativities. Think about oxygen, second most electronegative at 3.5. Hydrogen's 2.1. We're looking for that idea of 0.5 or larger, and we see it. We see it here at a 1.4. see it here at a 1.4. Here at a 1.4. And here at a 1.4. Very polar, it's gonna be some of our strongest glue. That's why water has a boiling point up to 100 degrees before it breaks some of that glue um, and becomes gas. So like last time, we're going to find the most electronegative atom. It's more uh, most electronegative, so make it feel partially negative. Hydrogen's getting bullied, feel positive as their electron is being nearly stripped away by oxygen, they're bullied. And very similar to before, positive and negative attract. In this case, twice. Twice the strength, and look at the temperature. These are also hydrogen bonding. So take a few minutes to try the next two, and we'll come back to the bottom. All right, next is dipole-dipole forces. So we're gonna need dipoles, we're gonna need polar molecules. These just won't be as polar as the molecules on the top. So very similar to hydrogen bonding, they're just weaker, probably about half as strong uh, in most cases. As we look at our first example, it's going to be about identical to the example we did earlier, and that was HF. The issue that we have with HF is we have a big bully. Here we have a smaller bully and less of a polar bond, and that's where the, all the difference in the world is going to be for intermolecular forces. So for chlorine, 3.0 in electronegativity, 
hydrogen 2.1 in electronegativity, still polar, this time only 0 0.9, which is still 0.5 or larger that we're looking for, and 0.9 again. Much like last time, we're looking for um, who's the biggest bully? Definitely 3.0, very electronegative, so make it feel partially negative, feel partially negative. Hydrogen's getting bullied, feel partially positive, feel partially positive. And just like magnets on a refrigerator, we have an attraction between positive and negative feeling atoms. This glue is weaker than hydrogen bonding, but it looks the same on paper. This is a dipole to dipole force. Notice its temperature, negative 85, much, much weaker than hydrogen fluoride that had a positive 19 degree kind of boiling point. Let's do one more example here. Same kind of idea. Uh, you can disregard the carbons and hydrogens, those are hydrocarbons, those are nonpolar altogether. But we do have to worry about that carbon-oxygen bond. Carbon again, second biggest bully at 3.5. Carbon at 2.1. Uh, carbon at 2.5, sorry. Hydrogen is 2.1. So again, the reason we can ignore hydrogen carbon bonds here is because the difference is 0.4, that's not enough to matter. But 2.5 to 3.5 does fit that criteria of 0.5 or larger, it's 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, and 1.0. Very polar bonds, just not extremely polar like on the top. We don't have that NH or OH or FH needed for hydrogen bonding, but we do have carbon oxygen bonds that are um, fairly polar here. Oxygen still, most electronegative, so it feels negative. Carbons feel positive because oxygen is being a bully. And like magnets on a refrigerator, positive and negative attractions will find each other, and these are called dipole to dipole forces. So take a few minutes to try the next two, and then we'll move on. So as we move on to page 87, we're going to look at the weakest forces called dispersion forces, uh, also called London forces. You can think of the child's nursery rhyme, uh, London Bridge is falling down, it's like London forces are always breaking. Dispersion forces are exhibited by everything, but we only really care about them for nonpolar because that's all they have. Um, so you can see from here that only the most nonpolar molecules is really the only glue that's available to them. And it's kind of like a snow globe in a sense. These electrons gather, kind of like snowflakes falling to the ground, although they're moving to the left in this case. But as they congregate, like snow collecting on the ground, that region that has electrons feels negative. And the region where there really no electrons are hanging out is going to feel positive because those protons from those atoms are still there. It's possible, but rare, for other molecules to exhibit at the same time a similar feature where you have electrons gathering on one side feeling a little bit negative, very, very negative in fact, uh, because they quickly disperse away from each other. But again, as they congregate, there can be that weak attraction there. And those attractions, those are dispersion forces. As we look at all three forces, this is kind of like the uh, tricycle. Everything has one, kind of like sitting in your garage. Everybody has a tricycle sitting in the garage. It's the weakest. Nobody really cares that you have a tricycle in your garage, but if you have a dipole force that we did earlier, it's kind of like a motorcycle. Uh, may raise an eyebrow or two as you look at examples of garages that have them. But very few have a Ferrari, and that Ferrari was the hydrogen bonding that we're worried about and we talk about in class. Um, so this tricycle, very weak. And as we look at examples at the bottom of the page, we're going to show you how weak. So as we do an example down here with hydrogen, think of that snow globe kind of idea. So when you think of a snow globe, you have to think of snowflakes. In our case, snowflakes are much like our electrons, and hydrogen being uh, number one on our periodic table only has one, so that only gives us two total, and I'm going to draw them at the top. So here's two hydrogen molecules, both with two electrons. I decided to go to the top. You could have just as easily decided the bottom doesn't really matter. What does matter is where the electrons are. Because electrons are negative, they feel very partially negative. And pretty soon they won't feel anything at all because they're going to disperse. What's most important is where they're not feels empty although there's some protons that are positive still there. And as they feel positive, there's gonna be a very, very weak attraction there. 
It keeps breaking like a lemon bridge, or in our case, like a dispersion force. As we look at hydrogen, the molecule itself, uh, we're looking at 2.1 versus 2.1. That's a zero difference, that's definitely non-polar. Let's do one more example and then we'll get to our lab. Methane molecules, hydrocarbons, hopefully by now you know that they are very nonpolar. Notice in both of these cases, temperatures are frigid, negative 253, negative 161. This is in Celsius. You can almost double that in Fahrenheit at that point. Uh, super cold still, don't have enough glue to hold themselves together, so they're gases at very, very frigid temperatures. So for methane, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna look for a number of electrons. Carbon does have four valence electrons, but remember it is number six in the periodic table, so it does have six, um, total electrons, and with hydrogen each having one, we got 10 electrons or 10 snowflakes in our snow globe idea. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Again, we're allowing them to gather uh, to one side or the other, it doesn't really matter top or bottom. But what does matter is where they gather feels negative because electrons are negative. Where the electrons aren't, there's likely protons that are positive and they're gonna feel a little bit positive before those electrons rescatter and disperse. And for that very brief moment in time, you're gonna have a dispersion force, which is the weakest of all types. It's like the tricycle. It's not like the motorcycle dipole kind of forces that resemble more of a Helmer's glue. And they're definitely not the Ferrari of all forces called hydrogen bonding that are extremely rare, but extremely important in the body um, to hold things together. Let's move towards uh, our lab experiment. So as you had a chance to work on those last two, you can check the answer keys uh, that I post online after, uh, after a while. So as we move forward uh, lab, we're gonna look at the different physical states, and as you recognize solid state being the strongest held together, they're fixed in place because the glue is strong. The glue is on all sides. And as we heat this kind of structure up, we're gonna start to break some of that glue, weaken some of that material, and as it turns from a solid to liquid, that's really what we're after. This idea that now we have some glue, but not glue on all sides. That's the major difference between a solid, where we have glue on all sides, frozen in place, versus a liquid that's allowed to flow that has a lot of glue, just not frozen in place with so much glue. So don't have to worry about individual molecules, and here we have hydrogen bonding because we have water, because we have those strong OH bonds. But eventually, as we heat it up to 100 degrees, we can get to that gas state by breaking all the glue. And that's where the molecules are moving so fast that the attraction between them gets so weak that they turn into that gas state. So as we look at forces and molecules like oil and water, notice a few things. Oil is a homogeneous mixture, meaning it looks kind of like water, uh, although it's definitely not. Many times it has nine or more carbons in length in that mixture, and it floats because it has a low density, meaning those molecules don't stack well together, being so floppy. It is nonpolar because those carbon, the hydrogen bonds, uh, 0.4, not enough. Those carbon-carbon bonds, zero completely, definitely not enough, and that makes it nonpolar. Probably already know that oil and water do not mix. Water very polar, much, much uh, better glue with very polar bonds between oxygen and hydrogen. It does sink because it's allowed to stack a little closer, uh, a little more dense. So it's going to sink in our experiment. It is a very polar molecule again because oxygen 3.5, hydrogen 2.1, that 1.4 difference, uh, definitely very polar. And again, gonna have a much higher uh, strength of forces. All right, so in lab, we have two of our beakers, both with our water. We have two cups of mineral oil, um, both about two thirds full. We're gonna add some food coloring and then stir it up. So for St. Patrick's Day, we picked some green. We're gonna add a couple drops of green to each one. Notice this molecule is sinking because it is more dense. And because it is sinking, we're gonna stir it up and notice what happens. So the more we stir, the more it doesn't really want to mix. So I'm gonna do that to both of these and be right back. 
All right, next is to add ice to one of these beakers and let that get cold. And this other one goes to the hot plate. To get hot. And we'll be back in a minute. So next we need to take the temperatures. So I have that done for you. Hot water was 52.7 and cold water was 9.7. We want at least uh, 40 or so degrees. Uh, so this will be perfect. So I'm gonna add two thirds cold water to one. I'm gonna add two thirds of hot water to the other. And then to these, we're going to add our food color and our mineral water. So we're gonna do this real slowly down the side at the same time. So on the count of three, one, two, three, slowly we're going to add them in. Definitely tell them right-handed. And notice, pretty lame so far, nothing's happening. But notice in the hot water, it's already transferring color. And that's important because molecules that are hot move faster. They move faster because they don't have very strong glue holding them together. And notice as coal does pop, it starts to make slower streaks because there's more stronger intermolecular forces, in this case hydrogen bonding between the alcohols and water taking place. We did lose a big droplet there, but notice the small ones very slow to taper off, the faster ones much, much faster to escape and mix. And that's what we're sketching in, as well as recording time in our lab book. So notice this one, almost like a jellyfish. Those molecules moving so slow because the attractions are so strong. Over here, it's pretty much green Kool-Aid already. Notice almost all completely mixed. The only part that's going slow is the part that's cold down at the bottom. So as these continue to pop, we're gonna time it. And then this lab, other than cleaning up some dishes, is just about over. So here's the end of the experiment. We have a few left to pop, but uh, for lab book purposes, six minutes, 18 seconds on cold water. And a long time ago, hot water finished at three minutes, 31 seconds. All right, as you answer questions, uh, this is the red food color mar uh, molecule, but we use green, but they're similar enough. Notice all the OH groups, um, very, very polar, just like water, which is basically HOH. So as far as polarity goes, definitely both very polar, definitely both mix very well in the uh, flower vases. But we also wanna talk about intermolecular forces and what we saw today is if you have OHs, um, that's about as good as it gets. We would call that hydrogen bonding. Down below, we have the functional groups. This would be on exam three. So as you look at this molecule, pick out six different groups. There's lots of repeats. All these OHs are repeats. The OHs around this fancy ring system are repeats. This top and bottom groups are repeats. Um, so as you look at groups like this one, compared to this one, compared to this one, those are our OH groups. Try to recognize the three different ones. Here we have a group on uh, either side of this oxygen, so that kind of gives that one away. We have those hydrocarbon rings, gives those away, and then these carbonyls. So list those out. You can check the lab book for answers. And then lastly, as we look at this one, think about what happened and what you should have sketched in your lab book based on that jellyfish versus green Kool-Aid example. When the temperature liquid is either raised or lowered, how did it affect that glue? Did it strengthen it or weaken it? Did they move faster or slower at hotter or colder temperatures? And if that's happening, the speed of those molecules, does that give them more time to attract or less time to attract? And again, those answers you can check in the lab book. And this lab's done.